Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Astrology Victoria. Today, with your host Tatiana, also broadcasting for ANN Archetypal News Network. And today, I'm going to bring you the overview of the month, the second half of the month of April. Everything that's happening in the skies and see what we can do with it. I'm going to focus on probably one main theme, which is the uh, solar eclipse in Aries. That is kind of a big, big deal <laughs> because of the amount of intensity and very um, intense configurations that are just happening right now, especially with um, Pluto and uh, the outer planets. Like it's It's just a lot. So bear with me a little bit and <laughs> we can get this going and I will give you also some tools for uh, dealing with these energies that can can be in some cases and for some people very very uh, intense and I just going to do more of a stream of consciousness today basically attuning to what needs to be said more than all the technicalities, which of course I will bring you some of the tele technicalities for those who like to actually see what's going on. However, I feel compelled to just allow whatever comes through um, to, to be given to you. So for whoever is listening, whatever resonates with you, please take what resonates, leave what doesn't. And another thing is like, I feel like a lot of people that watch these channels and um, are in tune already with um, the work that it requires to be conscious in your everyday life. Uh, I have the sensation that people, and if that's you, please let me know in the comments, right? Uh, if you're watching astrology, it's more, more, more likely that um, you are someone who wants to understand cycles, wants to understand yourself, wants to understand how to use this tool for evolution to a certain degree. And this is why uh, I feel that a lot of you present here might not necessarily go through tremendous crisis if you are able to very consciously use this information and, and uh, apply the tools that probably I give you or that you have yourself to deal with just the astral weather, basically, okay? So let's jump into it. I'm going to share my screen and we will go and look at this. Hopefully this is working full screen mode. Sometimes I have my little person up here, but you can still see my face. Okay, so um, I'm going to focus mostly on the eclipse. Um, because obviously we're leading towards the eclipse. Oh, what happened here? Hold on. I still want to see the overview before this. Okay. <laughs> the or overview. So the overview we have, obviously we have April 20th. In some cases is April 19th, depending on where you are located in the planet. But we have the new moon solar eclipse in Aries, um, at 29 degrees and 50 minutes. So, um, this is kind of a big deal. This coming two weeks, we will also have the sun entering Taurus and also Mercury retrograde. So that's the other thing we will talk about is how to deal with the second half of basically the last week of April. Because what's coming now in the next few days with the eclipse especially, it's that this portal of energy opens, opens up. So it's not on the day of the eclipse, right? Let's understand that these energies start being felt before and they lag after. And because the idea is to make really deep, deep, deep changes, this requires this time, consciousness, processing, and sometimes a lot of letting go which is part of the function of eclipses. Eclipses happen all the time, you know? <laughs> it's not like one special thing, but this, I mean, eclipses usually is twice a year, right? So 
this particular eclipse, because it has very strong alignments from other other transpersonal planets, becomes amped up, basically. What happens in an eclipse is when the sun, uh, the solar energy gets blocked and we lose the light. The sun represents the consciousness, what we can see. When this is blocked, even temporar temporarily, it's almost as if the ability to be conscious about what's going on is taken away. And then whatever is emotional in nature or primal that has no awareness just takes over. And sometimes this loss of consciousness is what gives the, um, gives the impulse to things that just need to go be released and we could see the most the, the worst shadow in these periods usually this loss of consciousness it's there so that from the darkness when light comes back we can see what what is still hidden in the darkness and can be brought to light and and really transformed and released when we shine light on anything well, it disappears, but at some point we need also to be in the darkness. This is why during eclipses, it's very important not to be focusing on moving the energy or doing rituals or anything of that sort. More in being inside, being at peace and calm, just to observe what comes up in our own psyche. What comes up? Triggers might be very present. Obviously, when we're not very conscious or aware, we just act out. We project into our out reality, our own internal demons, and they just go out. So we might see things in the world that seem chaotic because of the lack of consciousness. For those of you who are already practicing, uh, sp have spiritual practices, mindfulness, have the ability to tune into breath, into body, into self-awareness, into understanding of everything that gets created outside of you. It's a part of you and your consciousness and your thought process. And if you're already in tune with knowing how to center yourself when there is chaos outside, you might not experience these periods as something tremendously dramatic does this mean that outside events won't affect you no they could or maybe not it just means that you have you're better equipped to deal with these energies and also you already know that it's all your responsibility it's all inside of you and whatever comes up from anxiety anger frustration anything that comes up you can direct it towards yourself and help help eliminate it Instead of blaming people outside and putting that energy outside and creating more chaos and more anger and more frustration outside of you and then conflict and destruction. That's what we avoid. We want to avoid with our uh, capacity to be aware, self-aware beings. Triggers are triggers. Psyche is psyche. Collective is collective. We are all in the boat. So <laughs> let's talk. Let's look at the chart a little bit. So we can look at what aspects are um, are going to be very present in these next days. Um, and especially of course that eclipse, let me go. Okay, so the eclipse. Ah, this is our eclipse chart. And I want to present us to the fact that obviously it's happening in Aries, right? We have here the conjunction, the sun, moon. So this is the eclipse, it's a new moon. It's an eclipse because it is very close to the North Node. This is why it is an eclipse, you know, because new moons and full moons happen all the time, but eclipses is when these new moons or full moons occur near the nodes. In this case, this eclipse is happening near the North Node in Taurus. What's happening that is very particular about this eclipse is that we have a stellium in Aries and we have already talked about it, the energy of Aries as being the energy of the warrior the initiation the new things the impulse the courage all of that is the energy of Aries and having the eclipse there together with uh, Jupiter and Chiron uh, in Aries there is a lot of Aries energy still in the mix 
so this energy of the impulse of the what i want my desires and the sun in aries me my desire what i want what i want to go for speaks about the young the fire and the initiation what happens here is we have a square to pluto so this eclipse is squaring pluto at zero degrees 19 minutes of aquarius <sighs> here's where things get a little a bit complex because Pluto represents or its function it's to it it's it's to reveal what no longer what is dead basically that's why Pluto is associated with death and rebirth because the natural processes of life is things come in they develop they die we in our society are not used to dealing with death as part of everything that is and we attach a lot of suffering and pain to death however or basically when pluto comes along this is inevitable pluto will highlight what's putrefied what's dying and that needs to absolutely go so any attachments we have to something that is dead will go anything that uh, we need to see that is in the shadows, that is no longer us, that does not bring evolution, needs to go. So that's why Pluto's function in evolution is to remove the waste. <laughs> we cannot create anything new if the waste is still there. Or if you're carrying a bag of waste of dead things and you're trying to initiate stuff, that dead weight is not going to help you move forward. Pluto's role is to help us detach and release the dead parts of our psyche, of our behaviors, of our lives, anything that doesn't allow for evolution. So in this case, um, there's things to look at. The Aries of the energy of Aries, it's the energy again, like I said, of the warrior, is the young, is how do we get things? It's the will. I want this. Mars, Mars's function is the will which is obviously the ruler of this eclipse. It's the will. How do I go and get things? Do I go and get something because I'm trying to mask the pain or avoid, and therefore I just have a compulsion or an obsession to go and, and get something? The thing with Mars and, and Aries energy, the very raw energy is like, I want this, I want it now, and it doesn't matter what it takes. I will rampage, pillage, get it, break it. I want it, and I want it now. And sometimes it's to satisfy the ego needs. And when this is the case, basically because this has been probably the case for millennia, let's say, the way the masculine or the young energy has functioned, it is time to review. And when Pluto makes that square, it will help review what are our ego desires, which is the sun in Aries, that makes us act and go get things. Are those things that we go get, things that we truly desire in our soul that are aligned with our soul's desire? Or are these things, things that we get because of a need of control? Because if I can control a situation, then I might not necessarily feel pain because it's under my control. If, um, if let's say I want to create the world the way I want it, I want this and people do not necessarily show up in the way I want them to show up. Then what happens is, I'm going to control these people by projecting power onto them and saying, this is what I want, or you're wrong. And you know, those narcissistic behaviors, and I'm talking a little bit lofty here, but that's kind of that energy of that Pluto square, the sun. Um, it's like, I want this and no matter what, I am going to be important. I'm going to get what I want, no matter what anybody says. And then this projection gets on in the outside. In this eclipse, these tendencies that we might have of how, why are we going, how are we acting to go and get things that we want are going to be brought to the surface. What are our true deep 
motivations? Is it something that my ego wants or is it aligned with my soul and therefore is a very different procedure? So whatever is not aligned with soul will be brought to the surface and it can be brought in extremes um, of discontent, wanting to control people, control situations, attached to maybe things that you just that you have outgrown but you're still attached for instance a toxic relationship or a relationship maybe that has run its course or a job that we just don't like we hate it and and we're still attached to do those things thinking that that's what we want or that's what we have to be doing and then there's the component of fear and the fear is it's also going to be shown what are our deepest fears? Why are we not going for after what our soul truly desires? What is the fear? And this is <laughs> courtesy of Chiron squaring Mars. So you see we have Mars, the um, ruler of the eclipse, is squaring Chiron. So it's a double whammy of why am I not, what's, why am I so afraid of going for what I want? what my soul truly wants and on the same manner if so there's two ways of interpreting this well two maybe multiple but one way is if the way i do life is just going without any regard towards space compassion truth but only because of control this chiron will probably stop us in our tracks and limit us from action and then we'll notice we're stopped we can't move forward. No matter how much we want something, if it's not aligned with the soul, it just won't happen and will be taken away. And it's like, but I want that so bad. Give it to me. Why? And it's taken away. And then you can't move. You can't access that. So there's pain because there's that gets removed if it's not aligned with soul. The other way of seeing it is also if we have been weak, in our action and fearful all our lives because what if i went for what i wanted that 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 really gives me meaning that gives me truth that gives me like the sense or our the, the belief that i have or, or what's true for me in my being what happens if i if i just i, I can't do that so when it's diminished that energy that also will be highlighted like why are you not getting what you want look at this pain so this is a great time this is clear this is a great time to look at the motivations for what we want for our lives why are we doing mars's action why are we doing what we're doing ask yourself that question why is it for to please is it because society says so? And I, I and also Pluto is in Aquarius, which has to do also with the strive for freedom and a society that functions in levels of individuals that create a fabric. That's the Aquarian fabric. Is there's the individuality. It's within a whole that functions together. That's the basically a, a, a basic interpretation of the Aquarian energy. So what gives me freedom? What is true freedom? So what could we expect to see in this eclipse? People going like, I want freedom, revolutions, anger. <laughs> we can see frustration because we can't move forward. We want something. It's painful. There is difficulty uh we can see a desire to get what we want no matter what so it, it could create destruction as well like a lot of anger as well and usually it's to it, it's the anger of is the acting out of the little inner child that the child that probably didn't have mom give them what they wanted and they were in tantrum mode or the child that got hurt and was scared and then that fear comes up and then that's what we're looking at here it's just a lot of wounded mm, child and a lot of the wounded young or masculine why couldn't i do what i wanted why 
that pain comes up. And usually, again, it shows up when we can't get what we want. Sometimes we forcefully get it. So you see, it's those two sides. Either I am too weak to get it or too, too much of a coward or I just will do whatever to get it. And I, or I want recognition and I want to be seen. I want this. This is what I want. That's also the sun Pluto. So, my dear friends here, great time to ask those questions. Great time to sit with yourself. And in any, if anything happens in your outer world that disrupts your peace and triggers that anger or triggers that frustration, observe it. Instead of blaming the outside world, they don't let me. Look at yourself. Why are you so afraid? What are you not letting go of? Why haven't you gone for what you truly wanted? Now, the other part of it, which is, um, let's say, a little bit of the, the, the good news of this, is that, is that uh, Saturn in Pisces is sextiling the North Node in Taurus. We want to move towards experiences that feel more abundant that feel more free we want to really achieve certain levels of freedom but what is the price to pay is it freedom through revolution and chaos and disruption and hatred that's the way it has been done every single time in history this particular eclipse and because pluto hasn't been in aquarius for 240 years more or less it's been a while, you know, and that, that we're looking at societal rearrangement completely and how we're going to do this together. Are we still going to have to claim our rights and the, 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 the rights for freedom to be sovereign beings by fighting and fighting and fighting? Or is there another way that is more internal? That is about understanding the divine within us and the power that we do have. That is not a power over. It's a power within. It's a power that exists in the self. And that is God given or source given or energy given, however you like that word or that concept to land. So back to Saturn in Pisces and the North Node here. Saturn in Pisces is, is also asking us to ground our sense of connection to the spiritual realms or whatever spirituality means. Grounded meaning here now in the practical world, not out there, you know, not in the ethers, it's here. How do you apply compassion here with somebody suffering? How do you actually keep a practice that keeps you centered and balanced? How do you look at your shadow? Do you actually take the time to breathe, to, to look at your body, to feel the sensations inside your body, to feel the changes, to feel the triggers, and to understand where are they coming from? Do you take the time to do that? And if you don't have a practice, do you even reach out for help with these things so you can have a more a successful um, experience of self. And I, would, I don't know why this word came through as a successful, but I think the reason why is because uh, that's what the, the self wants. It wants to actualize and, and, and have um, and, and be, be fulfilled have success at existing i don't believe soul wants us to suffer or god or soul of energy so in this eclipse looking at that pain maybe you know sitting with yourself and sitting with those triggers do not engage do not engage in the madness especially during these days april 19th 20th do not engage Everything that will frustrate you, don't engage. Don't go and break the thing. If anything, release the energy by going out for a big run. Like, I don't know, do some deep breathing. Like There is an exercise that you can do to uh, release the amount of young energy or pent up energy. Because Pluto is like a volcano wanting to erupt. 
So if we let it erupt little by little by releasing energy, you might feel that it's not that even triggers do not feel that bad. If we pent up, pent up, the pent up energy gets squished and we just pretend that nothing's going on and we're just like holding it in. <clears throat> Chaos, destruction, problems, uh, anger, conflict, all of that we can expect. And we can expect to see in our society maybe riots and things around what, I don't know, things that may happen that trigger people. But we, conscious beings, can be more in control of our own selves. So an exercise you can do for the young, breathing through the nose, hold and breathe out through the mouth. When you breathe out through the mouth, it allows for energy to be released. That's when we have a surcharge of energy. You breathe through the mouth. If you want to recharge, you breathe only, breathe out through the nose, like in, hold, out through the nose. That's when you want to recharge energy. But when you want to discharge, you discharge it through the mouth. In, out. Deep, long breaths. That's one tool you can use if you are charged of energy and are ready to attack. Two, you can go and punch a bag if that's your style. Ah, ah, ah. Or punch the pillow. You know? Scream, ah, you know, let it out through a big scream or, ah, you know, that also helps. How else can you let it out? Run, bike, dance it out, <laughs> dance it out. Go and put some music that's really, really, really uh, engaging fast and just let it out. All of that can help release these pent up energies. The other thing you can do is sit with the pain with the fear and just look at it. Ask for help. If some, if you're, you're feeling these triggers and you just don't know how to deal with it on your own, ask for help to someone that can hold space for you. Not that it's gonna try and fix you, no. Someone that can just hold space for you to express and, and make a little bit of a sounding board so you can release it and, and, and move through it. So those are things you can do if if in, during these times you experience a lot of frustration or if things come up. If you have been doing work already in, in regards to your own being centeredness, you already have tools and you might not feel these energies even as, stronger, as strong. Now, who is going to feel this particularly maybe strong? A anyone who has planets or angles around the 29th degree of the cardinal signs, Aries, Scorpio, Cancer, and Capricorn. So if you have anything at those last degrees, and the first degrees, obviously, of Taurus, um, uh, uh, cardinal signs, sorry, Aries, Libra, I meant... <laughs> Aries, Libra, Cancer, and, and Capricorn, the cardinal signs. And then if you have, um, and then the beginning degrees of the fixed sign, Taurus, Scorpio, <laughs> that was my bad, uh, Leo, and Aquarius. So if you have anything around the last degrees of the cardinal or the first degrees of the fixed, you might feel that whatever planet is in contact for this eclipse, it's going to be highlighted. For you so look at that what is that planet doing if you have no clue what this means for you you can always contact me and i would be happy to give you some guidance all the information in the links below keep going on so that is who might feel this really really strongly um and also if you i was going to say something but i don't remember Anyway, so if you've been doing some work around a centering, that's going to be very useful. I have been doing a practice, and this is me, that has been very, very deep uh, for me. It's in the water. And I'm using the water sign, you know, 
the Piscean energy of the Saturn by going to the pool and doing uh, meditation in the water, basically breath holding and moving gently and allowing the water to move me. And almost like being in the womb, and I do my meditation in the actual water, just by noticing how the water feels on my body, noticing if I can allow my body to relax into the flow. Um, so I feel for me in particular, that's a very Saturnian, <laughs> a very Saturnian Pisces way of, 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 my, of having a process or a technique or a tool that helps me relax and helps me be inside my body and helps me be inside the flow i am practicing how to also flow and trust which is also part of what we could you know expect um especially after the eclipse as the madness happens then we can later we'll have a little bit of a different aspects that will support a little bit more of flow and the secret or the key definitely is in the water signs the key is in the yin or the feminine. Ha. If the masculine or the yang has been way out of balance, way much in the ego, way much up here in the cocky self, the yin is the actual help because that's what will start balancing those energies. So that's why the water signs, the emotion, the emotions, the vulnerability, the actual physical element of water that's why i mentioned the pool um connecting back to things that are a little bit more gentle holding space all of that will help the process of release of that anger anyone that does a little bit of that work inside of themselves is helping the collective and if you're watching this you're probably that person who has already that awareness and that is helping the collective process, the collective madness. So that is um, kind of what I wanted to say about the eclipse and, and why this, this particular eclipse is important is because it's, um, it's a lot of new beginning energy with the Aries, but based on what? Yes, back to the alignment with soul. Yes, yes, yes. I wanted to read something that comes from a book called A Year of... A Year of... Oh, I don't remember the book. Well, it's from... It's it's a, a channeling by Tina Spalding. Uh, it's channelings around the Course in Miracles. And I find sometimes these lessons to be very inspiring so I wanted to share something about what it means to align or to be to know that you you have a soul's purpose <laughs> and that soul purpose is given through joy and that the joy that we experience that connection that is not ego is the true compass that will take us to where we're supposed to be that's what we we are supposed to be doing because this eclipse addresses the doing what am i doing you know why am i doing what i i am doing that is the question of this eclipse control desires whatever how do we know the difference between my ego desire and the soul desire that is indeed a tricky one However, the way to access it is through the yin, the silence, the connection, and tuning in. What do I really feel right now? It's important for me to do. Oh, I, I'm, I'm feeling something in the heart. I'm connecting to an energy that gives me joy, that gives me a certain science sense of excitement, that feels good. And that's your compass. If it comes from a lower in the body, the lower centers or lower chakras, it might be more of a will or an, an ego desire. Oh, I just want this right now. Ah, I'm, it's an impulse. I want this. Why? I don't know. I just want it. You see? So the difference is also locating in the body how the energy moves. This is very subtle. How do you connect to the subtle? Well, you have to take the time for it. Yeah. So if you're still in the doing and in the rushing and in the, in the rat race thing, well, you're never going to have that time to connect and go this is also important because we can achieve and have anything we want if we are truly in tune 
with our soul's desires. And the only way to do it is to tune in and take the time. So I am myself practicing. Can I do even one day of tuning in at each moment? Well, not every moment because it's a lot, but maybe in the beginning of the day, like how do I see my day unfolding? What are the flashes that come to me? So this morning I woke up and I was, what are the what is more present? I asked the question to my being. What flash comes as like, oh, something that feels energized for me. I'm like, oh, I actually want to go to the pool, even though I know I have to do a lot of stuff. And I'm like, oh, I'm feeling really strongly to go to the pool. Hmm, I'm feeling very strongly that I want to get my video out. I'm, you know, and I'm like, okay, that feels that was what I want to do. And then I have a lot of plans, you know, but I, I have to do this and I have to do that. But guess what? That's precisely the exercise. It's not the I have to do, it's the I feel like this is what needs to happen now. And I'm practicing that and seeing how life can unfold and flow. So that's an exercise for you. And with that being said, I want to read a few excerpts of this lesson, lesson number 104 from the book from, of Tina Spalding and it's channeling Jesus. And again, don't take this as anything particularly attached to a religion. This is just some, for me, inspirational inspirational material that if it serves you great <laughs> i'd like to share it so it is important for you to understand that anything not loving is truly not you that's why it hurts that's why it causes suffering so keep it simple when you begin to feel bad and less than at peace ask yourself what are you doing that is not loving or not doing that is in accord with love. Perhaps it is as simple as taking a nap because you are tired. Perhaps it is as simple as saying, I don't really want to do that because it's not what you feel like doing. This seems inconsequential. But when you go through your day, you have many opportunities to say yes or no to things. Take a moment before you say yes to something to consider whether it's in alignment with I think I had a glitch but I hope this works so Many of you go to the jobs you dislike and you must own that decision. You must say, I choose this job. I go here every day. At some point, this job seemed like a good idea. How do I know? I know because I'm here and I go here every day. If you have set up systems, mortgages, and people who depend on you to go to this job, then you must address it in a, in a slow and steady way. Just as you miscreated along those lines, if you're not happy with what's going on, then you can choose again. It is important for you not to act as if others victimize you when you fully engage in the choices you make every day. Some of you say, that's not fair. I don't like the choices I have made. Well, you are the captain of your ship. If your ship goes in the wrong direction, then you must correct the trajectory of that ship. When you change the course of a ship, you do not suddenly turn hard on the wheel. You do it gently and slowly and make a wide arc until you reach the direction you have carefully calculated from the stars of your nautical map. For you, it is from your guidance system. If you are off track and heading to a land you do not want to visit, make a new trajectory based on the, the, the map that is your guidance system. Do not turn hard on that steering wheel because you may unbalance the ship and capsize it. It's better to go slowly and steadily back to a path that feels correct for you. So that was my little inspirational quote for you to ask yourself, do I really want to do this? Why am I feeling this loving feeling? This loving feeling feels here. There's a real connection to the body. That's where it happens. So um, those are my little exercises for um, the these eclipse times. When you can connect to that, ask those questions, do your little balancing, and I keep bringing this time and again and again to you until 
you know, for those who watch this all the time, great. You already have these tools probably down. Um, I don't know what happened with my uh, my video. I hope it, but I'm going to keep sharing the screen. Um, it, I will be very frustrated, obviously, if this video uh, got all erased because it glitched. So what happens also just right after the eclipse is that the sun enters Taurus. And now we have now this big stellium in Taurus happening. So it's the sun, obviously, that well, the sun, we have the moon, we have Mercury, we have um, Uranus. So for a, a few days, it it's almost this like oh, landing. The Taurus energy is the energy of what comes in and gets then digested. It's related to the mouth as the Scorpio energy is related to what exits. So this is kind of almost the time to sink in, you know, like let all of the changes and 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 realizations sink in. This is a time for a slow wing down. If you're still going 100 miles an hour, you did not let anything of what happened sink in, you are just carrying as much of of of, of what needs to go still with you. So this is good times to take that time to sink in. We have some sextiles also happening from Saturn. Well, Saturn to, uh, we said to the to the sun is going to be sextiling as well. So there is, this, this is why I mentioned these practices because Saturn in Pisces gives us the capacity to be mature also in how we um, interpret what's happening in, in the whatever we don't understand if we are in tune with ourselves and we are mature about it and that's why having a practice is very important because it gives us real tools to deal with havoc um then that's a that's a beautiful sextile from saturn where we can feel more in charge the sun saturn makes us in charge i am in charge of my ship i am in charge of my emotions I am in charge of my creations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's just a positive energy. You might see, oh, yes, I'm in charge. I can shift this. I can change this. I can change my thinking as well. Um, so, well, this is just some of the, um, the, the, the things moving through. Now, next little topic, Mercury retrograde. So April 21st, Mercury starts as retrograde. So Mer Mercury will be stationing through these days of the eclipse to go retrograde. So that's why our mind must, might be also very prompt, very aware of what's happening. And as Mercury starts retrograding, the important thing is not to keep moving forward, but letting things sink in. I say it time and again. The time of the retrograde, which is three weeks, more or less, that time that Mercury will be retrograding in Taurus, we want to allow everything, all the changes we've made in the past couple months, everything that's been moving, all the new things we're creating, everything, all of that, let it sink in, review the things, go back if you haven't finished certain things, certain to-dos, certain things that you started, if you if you probably moved some like made a big move or a big movement it could have been because you changed a job or you because you finished a relationship because you moved houses or countries or cities or whatever changes that have occurred it's good to review this is why we say oh don't sign contracts don't do this don't do that it's more because the the energy is not there to create more new things but to kind of look at what's being created already so we make sure it's still on, on the right track so that's our mercury retrograde so that's um a little bit of I, I, what i wanted to say obviously i could say much more about everything that happens all the time but i think i gave you enough to digest for now and i feel now basically um inspired to uh, that's what came through stream of consciousness and i hope this helps you please feel free to share like and subscribe um if these uh, videos are of any way in any way helpful to you please please do share them with people uh we don't know how we're impacting others or even share the information if you want 
um, regardless. Okay. Um, anything else? Mm, I will. I'm still thinking of that Pluto in Aquarius video that I wanna bring to you, so we give more context of the world we're moving into, and how to deal with the next twenty years. <laughs> All right. Blessings to you all. And I'll see you next time.